when did things really go wrong? Like when you just were like, oh, hell to the no, this is off the rails. It became worse the second cycle. Thanks for clicking on Simply Tanika. I am Tanika. If you are new here, welcome. Hit that subscribe button. Let's hang out a while. If you are returning, welcome back. Let's get those babies, ladies. I see the crystal raindrops fall and the beauty. Hey fam. Thanks for clicking on Simply Tanika. I hope you are well. We're gonna do a little different format today. I have a special guest who's agreed to partner with me in this video. Her YouTube channel is R Taylor, and I will put the link to her channel in the description box below. You are going to want to subscribe to her channel. She is about that realness. Okay, so she recently posted a video, uh, Regina did, Gina, about her experience with her fertility clinic, Shady Grove. And it moved me, it moved me to tears. I was so proud and so outraged and so encouraged all at the same time. Um, it was that powerful, you know, and I think that only comes from when someone is speaking their truth and it's a beautiful thing. And so I wanted to share her story with all of you. So I asked her if I could ask her a few questions. Um, so the fam would know about that experience. I think the most important theme is encouraging women or encouraging everyone to advocate for themselves, but using your voice, not being ashamed, advocating for yourselves, particularly when you are dealing with the medical community, as we often are while we are going through infertility treatments. Anyway, let me let that's enough. Let me get to her. Um, I was moved. I asked her to come and uh, talk with me and she graciously said yes. So thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, Gina. Welcome. How are you doing? Girl, no need to say thanks at all. I thank you. I appreciate this collaboration. And um, I'm actually doing pretty damn good. I'm having an amazing day. It's an awesome start of the work week. And I hope your work week is starting off just as great. Good, good. I'm well, thank you. First of all, Gina, I want to say I applaud and admire your strength courage and graciousness i was really moved by your sharing your experience with your fertility clinic you weren't angry or belligerent in any way you were very succinct and in pain and i i appreciate that you share that with all of us so thank you for sharing it I want to catch the fam up on what's happening for those of them who haven't seen the video yet. I will link that video here so that you guys can see it. But for now, let's let's talk to her while she's here. Let's start from the beginning. Like, what was your expectation of Shady Grove Fertility Clinic when you walked in the door? And how does that compare to what you actually experienced? So what was your vision? What was your reality with them? Can you share that with us just so everybody's kind of up to speed on what happened? Shady Grove Fertility is one of the top, if not the top, fertility center in the United States. So for me, I expected to be treated the way a top clinic would treat their patients. Like, this is the reputation you have, so I just assumed that's what I was going to be treated. Also, I'm a Kaiser customer. And I've been a member of Kaiser for the past few years. And in my opinion, Kaiser doctors are some of the best doctors on the planet. They are grade A when it comes to their field. Whenever I had to deal with Kaiser, it was always professional. It was always on point. So for me, I expected since Shady Grove Fertility is contracted through Kaiser to handle their fertility services, I expected to receive the same level of treatment that I've always received from Kaiser, from Shady Grove. No matter what the outcome, the way you treat people should always stay the same. No patient should ever walk out of your door 
feeling less than and that's how I feel I felt my actual experience with Shady Grove um I don't have a word to describe that right this second um it was just different than my expectations wow okay I want to clarify for the fam where is this clinic located? Because I know there are lots of them. I know someone mentioned one in Philadelphia and other places. Can you let us know which specific facility that you were seeking treatment from? I chose the Baltimore Harbor and the Towson locations simply out of convenience. They were the closest to my home. And it, although my wife and I, we just moved, they're still the closest to us so that was important to us because my wife and I have conflicting work schedules um, and it was important to the both of us that she was there for every appointment so it was more convenient and when you're doing IVF I wasn't doing something like IUI which isn't as time oriented with IVF, you have to see your doctor every other day. It doesn't matter if it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Sunday, or if it's Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. You have to see your doctor every other day, early in the morning. Most appoint appointments is around 7 or 7.30. It was no way we could drive two hours away to one of their other locations and be seen. It was just... No way. It just made more sense to use them. And we know people who have used Shady Grove, different doctors, but they've gone through Shady Grove. So honestly, we didn't feel like the location mattered that much. Okay. Just want to clarify, I know there are multiple. I believe Shady Grove Fertility has maybe 20 or less clinics up and down the East Coast. The two locations that I was a patient at was the Baltimore Harbor location, downtown Baltimore, and their Towson Merlin locations. About when in your treatment did things start to go wrong? With the third cycle, it started off good overall. They continued to mess up on appointments, but overall it was good. My retrieval was the best. They got so many eggs. This cycle, I was finally going to be able to freeze some eggs. So I'm like, I'm excited because I'm like, something's going in the freezer. And I remember the day that they called me to give me the egg report. And I think they retrieved like 10 or more eggs, something like that. And when they called me, my wife and I were shopping and we were in Old Navy. They called me and they said, hey, we have eight. Eight out of the ten, and they all of them look good. They still growing, and I was so excited. I was jumping up and down in the middle of the store. When I got off the phone with them, I just grabbed on to my wife. I was so happy. Like, I was so happy. And, and by the end of the week, that eight went down to three. I didn't care. We got eggs to freeze. So, all three were so good. I said... Let's just take a chance and transfer two. Because we got three. One of them will be frozen. But let's just chance it and just transfer two. And we transfer two. The very next day, the one we had to go in the freezer, it stopped growing. So now we're back to not having any frozen eggs. But I didn't care because these two eggs was outstanding. And it came time to do the pregnancy test. They said I wasn't pregnant, said to stop all meds. So that's what I did. A few weeks later at work, I'm in a great mood. I'm finally feeling myself. And I go to sit down at my desk and I jumped up. Cause I'm like, what did I waste? I just, it's so wet. What did I waste? And I turn and I'm like, it looked like blood. So then I have a mirror on my door. I looked and the entire back of my jeans was red from blood. And I yelled and my coworker came to help me. I had blood on my chair. I had blood on the carpet. I had blood on the floor. I had blood on the bathroom floor. I had blood in the toilet and I called Shady Grove and they kept telling me, no, that's just your period. 
at 37, I think I know what a period is like. This is not a period. I'm anemic. I've been coming on since I was nine. I never bled this much in my life. And they're like, no, this is just, that's just, that's just a period. That's just this, that's just that. And I said, I need to come in because this is too much. I mean, for goodness sake, my co-worker had to go and get, buy me new clothes. I had to give her my bank card to go get new clothes. I had on like six sanitary napkins. Like, this is not normal. And they said, no, it's just your period denied me coming in. And I, I left. I went home and I called my wife. I said, something's not right. Went to urgent care and it is what it is. No one at Shady Grove has ever acknowledged what happened, um, spoke about it. We don't talk about it. It's like, it's as if it's never happened. And yeah. <laughs> And then after that, they said, oh, we need you to do an HSG. Now, within this year, typically an HSG test lasts, is good for like a year. I've already taken two for them. Now, this will be the third. Then they told me I couldn't take it at Kaiser. I had to take it at their location. The day of, <laughs> they called me and said, oh, you got to pay such and such and such. You was given the wrong information. You have to take it at Kaiser call Kaiser. Kaiser can't get me in. So now, if, even if I wanted to do another cycle or more so I wanted to know what was going on with my body, I had to then wait an additional two and a half months before I got an appointment. That's when everything started to go down. When did things really go wrong? Like when you just were like, oh, hell to the no. This is off the rails. It became worse the second cycle. My egg retrieval was great. The doctor who did my retrieval was very informative. She was professional, kind. She treated my wife and I like we were human beings and we mattered. And because of that retrieval and how she treated us, she's our current doctor with Shady Grove. She's excellent. Um, if you, you know, use Shady Grove, go to Dr. Bill. She's excellent. Um, and it was exciting because they got so many eggs retrieved. This was the highest number they had from the very next day after the retrieval, I was still, although I was in pain, I was so ecstatic that they got so many eggs. I got a phone call and I'm thinking it's going to be the nurse to tell me how the egg's doing. And it was my doctor going completely bonkers. He was yelling at me as if I was his child and just misbehaved. Um, he was demanding my wife and I give him our credit card number so he could charge us $2,000 for a procedure because somehow all of our eggs died and the last egg that was left, it was a slow growing egg and the chances of it um, making it in a pregnancy become, becoming from that egg was slim to none but somehow he wanted us to still invest two thousand dollars in that bad egg and when we told him no he hung up on me i called back demanded to speak to him i need answers like what's going on he proceeded to continue to yell at me um and he ended the conversation again then i was told that i had no choice but to go through with the transfer um, even though the egg wasn't viable because that's a requirement through, of my insurance. And come to find out that wasn't a requirement and it could have been canceled. So I was forced to transfer an egg that wasn't viable, wasn't a good egg, wasn't going to grow. Um, nothing was going to come of it simple because he wanted to get paid because per my insurance, you have to have the egg retrieval and the transfer in order for it to be considered a cycle. And it could have been canceled. And that's when everything just went down. I spent the next 
two, three months trying to get answers of what happened because then I got a bill in the mail for the procedure that we told him we didn't want and he refused to give us any answers. He refused. We were told to just deal with it. Just deal with it. And um, yeah, that's what we was told. I think in every situation, there, something good comes of it, right? We do the best that we can with the information that we have. You have more information. You obviously have more power now. You are feeling empowered, which I'm all about. Initially, I wasn't going to say anything. I had my YouTube channel for years. And this is the most active I've ever been on my YouTube channel. And the reason I decided to say something is because... I just couldn't understand why I had to be muted, why my experience caused so much shame to other people when I was the one going through it. And when it's all said and done, a silent voice would never get heard. In other words, if I'm silent, how can all of the thousands and thousands and thousands of women that's also going through this going to hear me? If I'm not sharing my voice, how can I help them? People can't listen to and people can't be encouraged by something they can't hear. So and then I guess last but not least, if you had any advice to give to women who are embarking on their fertility journey or who have been at it a while and are struggling with their care provider, what would that be? So it was yeah. important for me to scream it out loud and say, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. If I can stand up by myself after spending my whole life allowing others to take control of me, if I can do it, you can do it too. And this is how we're going to start. All right. Thank you. I'm so glad that you agreed to do this with me. I appreciate you, sis. I think you are powerful. You are a force to be reckoned with. I highly recommend your videos to everyone. I know you've done a couple that have really moved me. This one, like I said, moved me to tears, but you've done one about things you wish you had known about IVF and other like truisms. And I just think like you keep it the realest as far as like what to expect and what you have experienced. And I like that, it's very grounded sometimes. And I think, you know, for me it resonates because I was hesitant to go into IVF. I never thought I would be there. Um, I have a daughter as you do, an older, so I'm also, you know, going through secondary infertility. So I'd never had this experience before and I thought, well, I could do it as natural as possible considering I'm a single mom, right? I did have to buy some sperm, et cetera. But um, aside from that, I wanted to not be over-medicated and ended up there. And so I just appreciate your realness. Thank you. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Um, I don't want to ramble on, but thank you. And thank you for agreeing to do this. And um, we will talk to you later. All right, fam, I know you liked that video. That was like the bomb.com. So please give this video a thumbs up. Head over to R. Taylor and check her out. I'll put the link in the description box below. Check her out on Instagram. She is definitely a woman who is lending her voice for the cause. I have mad respect for her. And I thought this was a perfect way um, to start off. Tomorrow we'll have a video on Pregnancy Loss and Infant Awareness Observation Day, which is the 15th of October. Um, I will put my first video up on the 14th because I have other women that have agreed to collaborate and share their stories. We will also be talking about it over on my website, simplytanika.com. But I think going into all of this, uh, the thing to remember is we are not victims. We should use our voices and be strong, be strong. Even if you're not out here like the rest of us like Regina and I with your faces and voices you can be strong within yourself and use your voice with your healthcare provider and I encourage you to do so I encourage you to advocate for yourself it is your body you know it best thanks fam I'll talk to you later bye mm. <sighs> baby does to you all I see crystal raindrops fall and the beauty of it all when the sun comes shining through to make those rainbows